let's learn about this concept of spatial indexing. When we run the model, the model is able to run, but while we are running the model, we get this error. No spatial index exists for input layer. Performance will be severely degraded. Now, this is a very ominous looking warning saying this, what if I don't have this? What if I create a spatial index? I'll suddenly get to improve performance. So let's see what a spatial index is and how it can help you speed up your computations. This is one of those key things that once you understand it and you use it correctly, it can have a significant impact on your QGIS workflows. It can speed it up by 10 to 100x. So let's learn about spatial indexing. When you have a book that you may have read, each book has an index. An index is something that allows you to look up something from a text or a spatial layer quickly without having to go through each feature. So index in a book would say, let's say you have a book and you're looking for a particular word. Let's say I have a GIS book and I'm looking for a word called projection. If I don't know how to find this, so I'll start reading the book from page one and I'll keep reading the book and at page 100, maybe there's a word projection and I found it. So to find that word projection, I had to read 100 pages and that's very inefficient. So most books will have an index at the back where somebody has gone and said, here are the keywords and I'll figure out where those appear in this book. So I look up the index for the word projection and says, oh, this word appears on page 100. So I can skip directly to page 100 and start reading the page 100 and I'll find it. So now instead of reading all the page from one to 100, I could just read page 100 and find that word. So this is the concept of index. When applied on the spatial data, this becomes a spatial index. So instead of trying to say, I want to find this polygon, where is this polygon? Instead of checking each polygon, excuse me. <laughs> so when I'm trying to find a polygon from layer, I said, I want to find this polygon. I don't know where it is. I'm going to start looking at each polygon from each feature and check if I find the polygon. Instead, I can have an index which will allow me to directly jump to the place in the world where the polygon exists. And this index can be pre-computed, just how we compute an index from book beforehand, so that when you are doing the analysis, you can use an index to find where in the world is that feature, and you can jump to that directly. The most commonly used index format for spatial data is this index called R3. R3 is commonly used in all your GIS software. So if you use PostGIS, QGIS, GeoPandas, every software uses this index called R3. R3 stands for rectangle tree. That means it uses bounding boxes of features to figure out where the feature is. So rectangle comes from the fact that it uses bounding boxes of features to know where the tree is. To explain how an index works, let's take an example. I have some polygons that look like this. Maybe this could be some building polygons. And I have a layer A containing this building polygons. So when I want to compute an index, I'll compute the bounding box of each feature and save it. Why bounding boxes? Well, each feature can have a very complex geometries and geometrical operations with this complex geometry are very expensive. Bounding boxes are very fast to compute. Given any polygon or line, you can just look up the minimum and maximum values of X and Y coordinate and you'd have your bounding box. So bounding box are super fast to compute and they represent the bounds of a geometry. That means geometry can exist inside of it, but it cannot exist outside of it. So it's a good way to say, my geometry is inside of this rectangle. And you then say, I will find rectangles that are close to each other. So let's say I have the seven rectangles and I'll say, I will group all the rectangles that are close together into another rectangles. So I have six and seven, which are close to each other. I'll group them into another bounding box. I have four, five, which are close to each other. I'll group them into another bounding box. One, two, three, four, four to another bounding box. And you can say this becomes the bounds eight, nine, and 10. So you had those bounding boxes at the bottom level, you group close bounding boxes together, and then you keep doing this till you have just a single bounding box left, which covers the entire layer. This is the process of index creation. So given any point line polygon layer, you go through this process and you build this tree. Now this tree tells you where all the bounding boxes are. So this tree is saved alongside your data. If you are saving your data in your database, it'll go as a separate table. The many file formats will have a separate extension which will store the index or they can be stored alongside the file itself. So we have created a tree. Now, how can we use it? 
Let's say I'm running an operation for intersection. I have this pink polygon and I want to say, I want to intersect this pink polygon with my buildings layer. Which buildings does it intersect with? If I did not have an index, I would say I have this layer and I have this polygon. I'm going to say, does it intersect polygon one? No. Does it intersect polygon two? No. I have to go and check each intersection. And that means each intersection I need to perform with the actual polygon geometries. That is very expensive. So I'll go and check each of them. And after the seventh feature, I'll find that, okay, this poly pink polygon intersects this one. So I have to do seven intersection lookups before I could find this. Imagine this, my layer had a million features. I had to do million intersections before I can find that this polygon intersects with this one. So that is expensive, that is slow. Instead, now what I can say is, I will not even touch the original layer first. I will look up my index. So I have this index. So I'll ask which of this, the bounding box of my pink polygon intersects with bounding box of which polygon at the index. So at the top level, it says, oh, it inter intersects with the polygon, the bounding box 11. So I look up all the children. Say, so does it intersect with any of the bounding box 8, 9, 10? And I say, okay, it intersects only with eight. And remember, these intersections are very fast to compute because it's just intersection of bounding box. It's not intersecting two very complex polygons. So this can be computed very, very fast. So I say, I don't even need to look at any geometries that fall into nine and 10 because the bounding box of nine or 10 doesn't even intersect this. So now I intersect with bounding box eight. What are the children? Seven and eight. And my geometry intersects with only seven. And now I have found this one feature that may or may not intersect my pink polygon. So I can now go and compute the actual intersection with the polygon seven and see if it intersects. So now instead of computing the seven intersections, I could quickly just look up from the index and just say, I need to check only one because the bounding box of only one feature intersects my bounding box. And I have now saved seven intersection computations. And depending on this layout of your data and the operation you're trying to do, this can have a huge impact on performance. If you have an index, a lot of these operations will directly go and find the feature where it needs to compute the intersections without having to go and iterate to each of those. So how do we use the index? Well, first we determine which boundary boxes from the index intersect the target polygon. And then we go and compute the actual polygon intersections. There is no compromise on the accuracy because ultimately what you use the index for is to just find the subset of features that may or may not intersect. And once you find this, you'll actually want to compute the real intersections with them anyway. So you get the same answer regardless, but you are doing much less work. And again, this is all the software that you spatial index, it does this internally. You don't have to do anything special. You just have to say, please use the spatial index. And just by saying so, you will allow the software to do this internally. QGIS has an implementation of R3 index, which is available to you. So if you create a spatial index on any of the layer, all the algorithms will use that internally without you doing anything special. And suddenly you'll see that the stuff that used to take five minutes will now take 10 seconds because it just uses index internally and it speeds it up. Spatial index is great. All of you must use it, but it's not a silver bullet that's going to solve all your performance problems. It will help you when you are doing anything that involves two layers and some spatial operations. So when you're doing intersections or overlays between two layers, that's where the spatial index will really help because it can find and say, I want to intersect this feature with this layer. I'll just go and find the features from that layer that I can intersect with rather than checking each layer. Anything that will be spatial query, find all features within 100 meter radius. Those kind of queries will be really sped up because you can now look up the neighborhood very quickly. So if you're just doing some operation, which is like buffer, doesn't matter if you have a spatial index or not, because it doesn't really, it has to go and buffer each polygon. So it doesn't impact all the operations, any operation involving two layers and any spatial queries or spatial joints will be fed up to that. So you would say why we should not use spatial index. If it's so great, why don't we use it by default? Because when you create an index, it takes up some additional storage space. If you have a one GB layer, the index itself might take a few megabytes extra. For most people, it's not a big deal. But most QGIS users also use PostGIS and Postgres databases. And that means if you say, I will always create an index, that means your database size will increase 
even if the user is not asked for it explicitly. So there's this has been some discussion around this. Right now, if you have a point clear, QGIS will pre-compute, will automatically compute a spatial index. If you doesn't have it for lines and polygons there, you have to specify it. So after you take this class and learn it, make sure you're doing any spatial operations and you see this warning, QGIS always will emit this warning wherever an operation can be increased in speed by a spatial index, it'll give you this warning. So whenever you see this warning, go and add a spatial index to your layer and it'll speed up the operation. Okay, let's see how we can apply a spatial index to our model and to our workflow to see how it impacts it. 